Hi, it's Taylor T. Carlson, and I'm back with another video for you. Today we're going to go back to the Game Boy, and we're going to look at one of the first games on the system, Super Mario Land. Of course, if you know anything about Nintendo, if you know anything about gaming or entertainment in general, Mario's pretty much the most recognizable character there is, period. This was Mario's first outing on the Game Boy, and interestingly enough, the game was not actually included with the Game Boy, as Nintendo had opted to include Tetris with the system instead. Now, I remember getting a Game Boy back in 1989 for Christmas when I was just a little boy, and it's definitely one of the highlights of my childhood. Needless to say, despite not being included with the system, Super Mario Land was a big seller, and of course, later reissued as a player's choice title. The game is unusual compared to a lot of other Mario games in that Shigeru Miyamoto, who had created the character of Mario, was not directly involved. Miyamoto's mentor, Gunpei Yokoi, one of the longest reigning employees at Nintendo, actually designed this game. He was actually responsible for designing a lot of toys in the old days for Nintendo, as well as several of their consoles. He had actually left Nintendo in the mid-90s following the release of the Virtual Boy, which of course was... Not a success in, well, just about anywhere, unfortunately. Another oddity about this game is that it's set in Sarasa Land rather than the Mushroom Kingdom where it's ruled over by Princess Daisy. And that makes this her first appearance in a Mario game, although she wouldn't really take off in terms of appearances until like over a decade or so later. Mario has to rescue Daisy from Tatanga, the evil space lord, and in doing so, he has to fight his way through four worlds, each of which has three levels, with a boss at the end of each third level. So Rossaland is divided into the Birabudo Kingdom, which is largely the desert and pyramids world, Mudo, which is a seaside world with plenty of threats both above and beneath the waves, Easton, which is based on Easter Island and has giant stone heads, rock-lugging enemies, and even boulders that Mario has to ride in order to traverse spike pits, and Chai, which is largely an Asian-style kingdom with giant bamboo trees and even undead zombies that come back to life after Mario stops on. With all these dangerous worlds ahead of him, Mario's definitely in for an interesting battle with a few twists. Of course, this is a side-scrolling platform largely in the vein of the original NES Super Mario Brothers, You'll get mushrooms to grow in size, you can get 100 coins to get an extra life. Oddly enough, 1-ups are actually represented by hearts in this game rather than 1-up mushrooms. This is likely because the Game Boy has a monochrome screen, so there wouldn't be a way to differentiate 1-up mushrooms from super mushrooms. And that change, of course, also carries on to the sequel, Super Mario Land 2. Another big change is rather than the fire flower, you can get the super flower, which allows Mario to fire super balls, which function a little differently from fireballs. Rather than bouncing around the ground in front of him, what they do is they ricochet when they hit a surface, bouncing around for a moment before disappearing. These balls can actually also collect coins that are out of the way, which makes them useful for several purposes. And of course, you'll want to have your hand on a super flower for most of the game with all the enemies that you encounter. This game has a few familiar looking enemies, including turtles and goombas, but it also has a lot of other interesting threats that haven't been seen in a Mario game prior to this or ever since. If you stomp on a turtle in this game, you better get away fast because not only can you not kick its shell in this game, the shell will explode doing harm to Mario if you don't get out of the way. Playing through this game, you'll see plenty of unfamiliar faces and that definitely keeps you guessing and keeps the experience fresh throughout. In addition to the standard side-scrolling levels, the game actually has two vehicle levels including a submarine level at the end of World 2 and an airplane level at the end of World 4 where you finish out the game. You do have to do battle with a boss at the end of each world and it's a pretty diverse and eclectic mix of characters you have to do battle with before you eventually make it to Tatanga and hopefully manage to defeat him so that you can rescue Princess Daisy. Also similar to the original game on the NES, should you manage to beat the game, you will get to go back to the beginning of the game playing through a more difficult version which throws in a few more challenges and twists. Namely, a lot more enemies as well as more dangerous foes that can catch you off guard and make this journey a little more difficult than it was the first time through. It's been over three decades since Super Mario Land hit the Game Boy. How does the game fare by today's standards? It actually still holds up pretty well. 
It's every bit as much fun as the NES Super Mario Brothers, which seemed to be the chief inspiration, but of course Gunpei Yokoi threw in a few twists, and that definitely makes this a more interesting and slightly less predictable Mario adventure. I remember playing this very fondly when I was a young boy, and it remains one of my personal favorite titles in the series. Even if it's only 12 levels long, it's still a lot of fun packed into those 12 levels. Granted, the game does have a few issues, though these are mostly issues that center around it being on the Game Boy rather than a weak title. For instance, there's no way to save your progress in the game. Again, it's pretty short at only 12 stages, but sometimes you'll want to just put it away and bring it out. The game was available for a while on the Nintendo DS Virtual Console eShop. I don't know what the current status is with that because I haven't touched my DS in a while, but if the shop is still up on there, that's something you might want to look into. I'm sure it's a pretty affordable game and a lot of fun. Plus, if it's on there, you can actually save your progress, which you couldn't do on the original game, and that's a huge bonus right there. Super Mario Land is definitely a great early Game Boy title, and surprisingly, it does stand up against the test of time, despite its limitations of being on an obviously inferior system at the time, especially compared to a lot of the console games. I would say this game, even if it wasn't the highly revered classic as the original NES Super Mario Bros., I think it's every bit as much a fun game. Have you had a chance to play Super Mario Land? Is it one of your favorites from back in the day? Do you think it's not held up as well? I want to hear what you've got to say. Comment down in the section below and let me know what you think. Also remember to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel. I'm Taylor T. Carlson and I will see you in my next video game review.